I'd like to tell you a bit about the intensive teacher training program that I've developed with my wonderful business partner and co-director of Yoga Synergy, Bianca Matchless, who's also an exercise-based physiotherapist, as am I, and also an amazing yoga teacher. We've created a style for the modern body, which is a synthesis of our understanding of Western medical science and traditional yoga practices from all over the world. I'd like to quickly tell you about our Yoga Synergy online teacher training intensive course. If you are interested in learning more about how to help your own health, if you're interested in how to maybe help others, then our course is something which has got so much going for it. We've had a combined nearly a hundred years of practice between the two of us. And that practice involves not just personal teaching from amazing teachers all over the world, but also years of training in university facilities where we did uh, biological sciences. I studied human biology, molecular biology, both Bianca and I studied um, uh, physiotherapy. And within that, there's so much that we learned in conjunction with our training in India, with people like BKS Iyengar, K. Patabi Joyce, um, Sri Desika Cha. We had also fantastic teachers in Australia and around the world. And, you know, I've been lucky enough to have received teachings not just from wonderful Indian teachers, because yoga is something which we think of the word yoga as coming from India. But actually the idea that yoga is that recognition that we're all connected as one, the idea that our individual consciousness is one with the universal consciousness, that's a global thing. Every traditional culture has this. And it's this that we want to share. So the actual philosophy of yoga actually goes in every culture. So I was lucky enough to learn when I was very young, like you know, eight years old, I learned how to do internal yogic kriyas, where you're learning how to expand the abdomen and chest without breathing. Learning how to roll the abdomen. I learned this, which is, you learn it from first having to learn how to hold the breath out for long periods of time. Something I learned from my father, who was a free diver when I was six. And I was taught by Basil Brown, who was a, an amazing athlete from Rhodesia, who was taught by the traditional peoples of South Africa. And they taught him how to do incredible things with his breath. Amazing cultural heritage. When I was in my teens, my mid-teens, I had a Tibetan Lama. He taught me incredible philosophy of yoga and some amazing tantric techniques. Then I was lucky enough to start learning from teachers who'd learned amazing things from Japan. Wonderful Japanese teachers learning from Masahiro Oki-sensei. And then also learning from wonderful teachers like Professor Bhimdev, who I can't speak highly enough, who was the gold medalist of Indian yoga in 1972. And after that, in the early 80s, I went to India and studied with Iyengar first, Patabi Joyce, and then Desika Cha. And I met Bianca in more than 30 years ago. And first we studied together, then with the teachers. I took her to India. We went to India many times together. I've been 25 times now. And living in India, you learn so much, not just from teachers, but the culture of India actually changes so much. It actually teaches you how to live. And this teaching starts to become a philosophy. You know, you can read philosophy, but when you live it, it's different. And the Indian philosophy at its deepest level, the traditional wisdom, is such that you're living what they call yama, the first stage of Ashtanga Yoga, is this idea that you have to treat yourself the way you want to treat the world. And we treat ourselves with yama by saying, be gentle, be balanced, be giving, spread loving information, and establish freedom. These are the things which often the West has misunderstood as being, don't be violent, don't tell lies, don't have sex, you know, don't steal, and don't be attached. It's, not, it's the opposite of those things. So I say for me, really, to live yoga, I create within myself and then in the world outside a gentle, balanced giving of loving communication and freedom. And this is what we teach 
for our own bodies, what we'd like to share with you, and what we'd like to get you to use as a model for how you are in the world. I call it sharing good energy and loving information within yourself, and use that as a model for being in the world. And the way we do this is quite scientific. We actually have used years of research. I worked for a long time along with Bianca at RMIT University in a degree called the Master of Wellness, where we had subjects such as positive psychology, mind-body medicine, energy medicine, and we taught subjects like body, breath, and movement, the applied anatomy and physiology of yoga, and the fundamentals of yoga. And these were university subjects. We created online courses uh, for the university, and it's these courses that we're offering in our online teacher training, this intensive teacher, intensive teacher training. We, um, we taught at um, live intensives for many years, over the last 10 years. We had wonderful live intensives. Many of you watching would have come to those live intensives, and they were so much fun. And one day, we hope to run them again. But at this point, I live in Australia. I'm not really allowed to leave Australia at this point. It's very difficult for me to leave without the risk of not being allowed back. So currently, I can't do the international trainings. I have this beautiful dome that I've just created, and maybe some of you can come visit us here eventually. But in the meantime, online is the way to go. And we have got resources, so many resources online we'd love to share with you. We have the courses we wrote for the university, RMIT University, including what essentially is 24 hours of really well-filmed video classes on the applied anatomy and physiology of yoga. We're not just telling you where your muscles and bones are. We tell you what to do with your muscles and bones to get better strength, better flexibility, better fitness. That course is backed up with another course I filmed about the same time, which we call Asana, or also I call it 84 Postures for Strength, Flexibility and Fitness, where we show you how to really use your muscles, your joints, and especially your nerves and nerve reflexes and nerve tensioning to get the best effects for strength, flexibility and fitness. So you start to access postures very, very easily. You start to be fit in everyday life. I'm 61 years old this year and going on 62, but I still go out to parties and dance on the weekends. So dancing with people who are 20 years old and it's just fun to be able to have a body that's still healthy and strong. And I attribute this to the practices that were given so generously to us by our wonderful teachers from India, from Tibet, from Japan. And in the last 20 years, I've had some wonderful Chinese teachers who I still study with. And these teachers all, in the end, said the same thing. They use different words, they have slightly different cultural understanding, but essentially it's all yoga. So some of what Bianca and I teach may to look like, sometimes it might look like Qigong or Tai Chi, but essentially it's the same. This looks like Tai Chi or Qigong, but when I make my legs wider, then it starts to look like yoga, yoga. So is that yoga or is that Tai Chi or is it the same thing? It's the same thing. Essentially, the principle is you're moving prana, or we could call it chi, from the kanda, the core of the body, or we could call it the dantian. In indigenous Australian cultures, they call the core of the body the nadu kuru. In Japan, they call it hara. All traditional cultures knew the importance of moving from the core, thinking from the core, acting from the core, breathing from the core. And it's this that we teach as well. The physiology of Breathing, the physiology of what happens with your nervous system, your cardiopulmonary system. These we teach in another course that we established for RMIT University and we filmed and we're actually offering that for uh, online teacher training. And it's called Advanced Yoga Fundamentals, where we take a basic sequence of postures, an adaptation of what uh, the Ashtanga Vinyasa practitioners learned from their first and second series, but this is something which is much more accessible, much more suitable for the modern Western body, which has been very tainted physically by sitting for long times on chairs. It's been very tainted physiologically with the stress that we carry around with us from sitting on chairs partially, because it also affects your diaphragm and internal organs, sitting 5 to 15 hours in a chair, but also our physiological body has been significantly impacted by the foods we eat. Lots of really poor 
processed foods, the air that many people breathe. So the physiological body of the modern body is not as healthy as the traditional bodies that yoga postures were first designed for, that traditional practices were first designed for. So Bianca Matchless, my business partner, who's also a physiotherapist, has, you know, we've designed ways of actually making practices which take that into account and help compensate. So we actually also compensate for the effects on the Western mind. You see, the Western mind has, in its basic paradigm, the exact antithesis, the opposite of what yoga says. So much of Western practice is orientated around no pain, no gain, the flight or fight response, survival of the fittest. Survival of the fittest is an outdated notion. You know, biology actually works with cooperation. The environment works best when animals and plants cooperate. It's not by fighting against each other. That's an outdated, outmoded thought. But yet, most people practicing modern exercise actually work in those paradigms. No pain, no gain, survival of the fittest. And if you're not good enough, you won't get the results you want. A lot of modern exercise misses the point, but a lot of the ideas of modern exercise have crept into modern yoga. And of course, there are many good teachers, but it really helps if you can learn from people who have been doing it for decades. And Bianca and I have worked together for more than 30 years, and both of us had independent practices before coming to our training. So in the course we call the Advanced Yoga Fundamentals, we take a series of postures and we go through with a, with a uh, set of notes and a set of lectures where we explain in detail every part of that practice. Every part of that practice. So these are the typical poses that most people do. We're explaining not just the physical sides of it, but also the physiological aspects of the practice. What's happening in terms of blood flow, in terms of nerve function? How will this affect your internal organs if you do it this way or that way? And then on top of that, we have the potential for understanding therapeutic implications. I mean, what happens if you start your practice and you've got a knee problem, a hip problem, a back problem? We can help you because this is what we specialize in as physiotherapists. But also many of our teachers gave us so many clues as to how to work with these problems, but not just physical problems. Now we've got really good understanding about how to make blood flow through the body with ways other than the heart. The heart's only one way to pump blood through the body. There are 11 other ways which are much better to use. And the yogi has always said that they count their life, not by the number of years they live, but by the number of beats their heart makes and the number of breaths they take. And that's what we're trying to teach. The modern Western paradigm is got to get your heart rate up. You should breathe more. You should stretch and tense your muscles. But actually, what we're trying to give you is the idea of being like a fit person. A fit person will run fast, hardly breathe at all. A fit person will run fast, their heartbeat is slow. That's why we call them fit. Unfit people walk very slowly with their heart racing and their breath going. <sighs> That's not health. And when people try and over-breathe, over-tense, over-make their heart race, what happens is you stimulate a flight or fight response. This stimulation of what's technically called the sympathetic nervous system dominant state is one which will cause long-term problems, especially if it's sustained. And unfortunately, the flight or fight response tends to be sustained in most modern adults. We're surrounded by a media which propagates nothing but fear. We're often being stressed by our lifestyle, mortgages, children, relationships. And on top of that, if you put exercise to stress you as well, it's an invitation for having a very dysfunctional nervous system where you will disrupt the function of your immune system, digestive system, reproductive system. And you also put your mind into the state, which is the state you come into in the flight or fight response, where the dominant emotions are fear, anger, aggression, lack of safety, lack of trust. So this is why it's really important that the prime purpose of your practice, and this is what we teach in the Synergy practice, is that you are trying to move, use your muscles, use your joints, but encourage blood flow in a way that your heart rate stays low and encourage a dominance of your parasympathetic nervous system 
which we call euphemistically the rest, relaxation, rejuvenation, regeneration response, which means then your immune system works well to heal. Your digestive system works well to absorb nutrients, eliminate toxins and waste. And your, and your reproductive system works well, not just to keep your hormones working well so you have better fertility, better sex, well that's good, but also the cells will regenerate. You can be 100 and still regenerate brain cells. You can be 80 years old and have skin like silk. And this means you're going to have the possibility of living a life which is going to be happy, healthy and long. And that's what we want. Because enlightenment doesn't happen overnight. You know, you, they say that youth is wasted on the young. For me, as I got older, okay, there are some limitations as you get older. It's not quite the same as when you're 20, although I can still probably outdance many 20-year-olds that I've met. But what happens is your mind, provided you look after your brain with healthy food, healthy breathing, and don't become apathetic, your mind becomes better every year of your life. And the most important thing you learn with a good practice is that happiness is a choice, not something you wait for. And this is something you begin practicing, but you actually do it on your mat every day. And this is what we teach. We teach a practice. And this practice we share with you in one of the courses which we have on our online training called Spinal Synergy. And the Spinal Synergy course, I teach you simple spinal movements. And it's done as much as possible without verbal instruction. It's visual instruction only. And in these beautiful practices, it's almost like a dance, but nothing complex that you have to do choreography for. These are simple movements where you start to feel that you're in a warm bath, being massaged by someone who really loves you. That's what the yoga feeling should be like. So that when you're practicing, it shouldn't be a chore. It should be the joy that you want to have in your most blissful moments. And we teach you how to practice in that way. Nothing should be uncomfortable when you practice. There are ways of getting flexible without needing to feel stretch. Stretch is something which stimulates a fight or fight response. Stretch is the step before pain, the step before injury. So we'll teach you ways of becoming flexible without needing to stretch so much. Ways of becoming strong without feeling tense. Tension actually blocks blood flow. Tension is a symptom of flight or fight response. Meaning when you start to feel tense, already you are disrupting the function of digestive immune reproductive system. And although you think you're just exercising, your subconscious emotions, your cellular emotional state, is saying fear, anger, aggression, lack of safety, lack of trust. If you want perfect health, you want every cell of the body to treat every other cell of the body like a young mother treats the baby who she knows was part of her just before the baby came out. And that is a one-way street between mothers and children, unfortunately. But perfect health, perfect yoga, is when every cell of the body treats every other cell of the body like a mother treats a newborn child. And when that happens, you get perfect health. When the cells don't trust each other, when maybe one cell doesn't like another cell, that's autoimmune disease. When one cell divide, decides not to share, that becomes cancer. It hogs all the information for itself, all the food for itself. So these are the things that you won't learn about very easily if you learn from people who have not been practicing for so long. We can really thankfully say we've had some of the best teachers in the world and we've been doing it, not just with Western teachers, not just with Indian teachers, but also with teachers from China and India and Tibet and indigenous cultures as well, from South Africa, South America, Australia, and Thailand and other places. And so the learning we've got is something we'd really love to share with you. Please think about it. Have a look. We have lots of online courses. All our online courses usually have at least one lecture you can view for free. If you go to yogasynergy.com and you can get an hour or so of something you can see and you can learn from. And that means you don't have to pay any money for it. But if you want to invest in your future, invest in your family's future, do something for yourself. Consider joining the Yoga Synergy Intensive Training. We call it an intensive teacher training course. But who's the most important person to teach? It's yourself. Teach yourself how to use safe, accessible, and effective 
posture, movement, breathing, mental control, in the form of something which might, some people might call yoga. Some other people might call it meditation. Yoga and meditation are the same thing. But when you do this and teach yourself how to feel good in your physical body, so you're not suffering with painful joints, good in your physiological body, so you have good energy, good digestion, good immunity, good health, and good mental body, so that you're actually enjoying the practices you do on your mat. But you get so good at enjoying them that you start to enjoy your life. You find that happiness is a choice, not something you wait for. And then, when you can do this, you can do it so well to enjoy your own life. And you've looked after your body. It makes it so much easier to help other people enjoy their lives. Then you don't even have to teach. You can just inspire other people. But they'll ask you, what is it you're doing that makes you walk so well, have so much energy, live so freely? And you can say, well, you can try this exercise or that exercise. You can share something that you've mastered and learned for yourself. This is what we want to share with you. Please, have a look at our intensive training. I really recommend it. And if you can't do it yourself, maybe share this with some of your friends. Thank you very much.